Hey, what's up, everybody? I know it's been a long time since I've done a game development video, uh, but you know me. I'm always doing it, then not doing it, and switching to a different language or operating system or whatever. So anyway, I'm back. I have a new project going on. If you've been following me on Twitter, you would uh, know a little bit about that. But to bring you up to speed, I'm programming in Mac OS X. I'm using Xcode, and I'm working with the SDL libraries in C++ to make a Mac and Windows game. Um, I'm trying to make a game that's you know, small in scope and in size so that I can actually work on it and finish it. Um, that being part of the problem with my other projects, I never actually got to the point where they were complete. I think just because they were very overwhelming and there was so much work to do. And I think by focusing on something that's very small with a lot of reusable gameplay, um, that I'll be able to finish it, that'll be good for motivation because I still really enjoy doing the programming and doing game development. And I, uh, I have some friends that have been very motivational in getting me to work on this project. So here I am. This is what I have so far. Um, you can click and you can move the player around the screen. Player is crudely animated with some placeholder art. And he moves to the destination marked by the waypoint of, by this X. So if you right click, it stops moving to that waypoint. Um, at least for now, I'm using like a The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past sort of uh, setup here for motion. So the player calculates which direction uh, they're moving. They create a movement vector to get there. And then the player will face whichever direction is the longest to travel. So you can see right here, he's facing up and down. But if the horizontal distance is greater than the vertical, he'll be facing left or right. Um, the animation doesn't support a uh, tiled sprite sheet just yet. I have individual images created for each of these things, and I'm just loading the images in the beginning and showing whichever one is appropriate as an SDL surface. So I still have to work on the animation, but what I'm thinking of trying is using a sprite generating program that generates sprites from 3D models, because uh, my wife's an artist, and I would probably have a lot better luck actually having her create 3D model and texture it and I would simply animate that model because then we could just modify the model or the texture to create different enemies or to modify the player appearance and then I would just have to load up the animations, run through them and save them all as sprites because um, I think that would take a lot less time than, uh, than it would to simply animate every frame and do it all over again and that way I could capture everything from multiple angles depending on what viewpoint I want to use yet I could still use a 2D background to save myself the time it would take to program a 3D engine. So anyway, I'm getting off track. I just wanted to show everybody what's going on here. So um, this crate is also movable. You can click and drag, and you can move it anywhere you want. Then if you try to get the player to walk through it, boom, he stops. So, And if you actually hold down B, it activates a, a mode that shows you what the, the bounding boxes for everything look like. Well, not for the player right now, but that's okay. So you can see the player will bump right into where the bounding box is on that crate. Um, I created some things going on behind the scenes here too, as if you've done this sort of thing, you know that most of the stuff is behind the scenes, and this obviously is not a very impressive video game, but um, behind the scenes, I have an input manager class, so every time the uh, engine runs a cycle and updates, it's saving the state of all the keys. So for example, I can say, if the state of the B key is held, you know, show the bounding boxes. I could just as easily say if the state was just pressed, toggle it to active or disactive or inactive, depending on whatever it needs to be. So I have that all set up to go so I can do a full control setup. Left and right mouse button events are grabbable. I also created a base class today for, I forget if I called it drawable entity or game entity, one of the two. So this waypoint, the X, the, uh, the player, and the crate, are all using the same base class, which will store position, a bounding box, a drawing event, um, a boolean value for where, whichever, whatever it's, um, whether it is active or not currently, and it will also, um, it has the, uh, the show the bounding box mode, and that's in that base class too. So, I mean, if, like I said, if you've worked on this sort of thing, you know a lot of it is laying the groundwork rather than making flashy stuff. So the idea that I had for the actual gameplay which I'm trying to set up on one screen before I proceed to the you know, more fancy things, 
is I like uh, a cover-based shooter, kind of like Mass Effect, which I've been playing a ton of lately. So it'll be like a timing-based game, so you can position yourself and cover, and that's a tactical element. And then you'll have to pop out and shoot when the time is appropriate to shoot the enemies. And I want to have different ways to make it an exciting and tactical sort of thing. I want the perspective to be kind of how um, Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, had an overhead sort of thing going on, or something more like Diablo, where it's a little bit pulled back and isometric as opposed to straight overhead, which I don't want. Um, that also would be helpful when I'm rendering those those 3D models into sprites. I can do everything from the different angles instead of just having to have a full 3D engine. Because again, I want the game to look somewhat presentable and not look completely amateurish, but also be able to be something that I can complete. And then I can, you know, if as long as I have a basic, um, simple game, I can advance that engine and use it for games that I could sell in the future. So. Anyway, that's my thinking. That's where the project is at right now. And I just wanted to get everybody up to speed because I've had some requests for videos and for updates. And well, I really appreciate that the people who are still following me on Twitter and on YouTube have been keeping up. Um, every time somebody asks how it's going, it's always, you know, in the back of my mind that it's like my destiny to actually finish one of these projects someday. So hopefully this time it'll stick. I'm very thankful also because I have some friends that are really pushing me and talking about how awesome it would be if I finished a game and how I would be the man. And I'd say, you know, that would be cool. Even if I don't become a commercial game developer by trade or whatever, I made a video game. That's pretty badass. So anyway, if you have uh, questions or uh, helpful comments, anything like that, please feel free to leave them and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.